What's up, everybody? It is October 3rd. It is a gorgeous 70 degrees out right now. I think it's actually, yeah, it's 70. Um, too pretty to be inside. I had a couple hours, I figured, uh, not even a couple, but an hour or so. I figured I'd come out and shoot for a bit. And <clears throat> I just went and grabbed a bow. I wanted to shoot this one. I haven't shot it in a really long time. It is my Super D. This particular Super D is 50 pounds at 31 inches. It's 66 inches long. I bet this bow is, I think it's 41 pounds at my draw. Um, I haven't shot this bow in quite some time. I didn't even... I had to pull this string off of something else and make do. So I have a few, I have two different arrows here. I have my aluminums. Um, these are my 1916, 1914, sorry. I use these for quite a few, uh, quite a few bows. Um, I'll give these a shot first, see if they work, see if the knock fits. I don't even know. Yeah, it fits. I'll see how they fly. And, um, I'm just going to walk around and shoot this and see how it goes and get a little video, do some chat with you guys. And I'm going to start putting more content out there with uh, me shooting and doing some feedback on whatever it is I'm shooting. All right. So again, this particular bow, um, I bought secondhand Super D. I've had four Super Ds over the years. They are um, truly one of my favorite bows to shoot. Super light, nimble. Um, I mean, this bow is weightless. I believe it's Texas Ebony. I don't know what the veneers are. They're nothing fancy. They're just kind of brown. Um, but again, this bow, really fun to shoot. I'm just going to fling this uh, aluminum oh yeah that flies pretty nice it's a 1914 and I have um, 175 up front 175 grain screw in point it flies really nice Shoot one more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I figure I'll walk around the range and do some shooting, do some filming, and uh, talk about this Tolkien Super D. really spend much time with this bow but this is a favorite I know how can that be but ever since I started competing in bear bow I've gotten away from my wood bows um, but in the fall like now nothing's going on I'm not competing and I just like being outside walking around shooting my trad stuff I love traditional archery um, it's where I have my roots so that's what I'll keep doing That arrow might work, but I'm liking the way these uh, 1914s shoot.
Rejected. Yeah, again, this bow is, uh, like I said, 40, 41 pounds at my draw. So it doesn't have a lot of power. It doesn't have a lot of punch. Um, it does not throw the arrow very fast. <clears throat> and this is, I don't know, 400, 400 and change grain arrow. Don't know off the top of my head. I'll figure it out and I'll post it on there. Um, I would hunt deer with this bow for sure. Um, again, close, very close range bow. I probably that that's 20 yards. I'm guessing to this target. I don't know that I'd shoot. <clears throat> I don't know that I'd shoot uh, much past 20 yards or at all with this bow, especially at an animal. Um, it just doesn't have a lot of punch, um, but this bow is very smooth and it's very fun to shoot. There's not a lot of hand shock. Um, of all the D-shaped bows, hill style bows, this probably has the least amount of hand shock of any of them. This technically isn't a hill style bow um, because of that reflex. It does have some mild reflex. You can see, I'm gonna string it real quick. And you can see it's, it curves back. It's got like that back set a bit. And then when it's strung, you can see that it, definitely wants to come back for sure. Um, I don't think this categorically fill, uh, falls in, into a hill style bow. Um, I think there's a lot of your uh, hill style bow shooters that definitely would not consider it a hill style bow. Got rejected again. These targets are quite hard. Carpet, carpet, and I think rhino liner sprayed with rhino liner. There we go. Now the Super D. These bows are made by Jared. And Dan Tolkien of Montana. Um, they have an extensive lineup of longbows. Probably most notable is the whip. <clears throat> it's a short bow. Um, of course, they have the 10X. Um, you know, again, just an extensive lineup of bows, and they're all very good, very good shooters. Um, and one of my gripes with bowyers that you've heard me talk about is poor communication. Well, Jared and Dan are not that. They are very good communicators. Um, you can send them an email, and you'll get a you'll get a call back same day. Um, Dan has called me several times when I've sent emails. Um, they do very well at communication, which I super appreciate.
Dead bear. Now well, we got some turkeys coming in. Man, I like shooting this bow a lot. Let me get you see some of these turkeys. We have a pretty big flock that's come in around the archery range. And uh, it's kind of cool to see. Let me see if I can. Uh, they're kind of running off. There's a guy up there. I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to turn this around so you can see the turkeys. There they go. We have quite a few out here. And they are all very long bearded turkeys. <laughs> there they go. Um, anyway, back to talking about the Super D. I got three kills on this Grizzly. Um, they only make the Super D one month out of the year. And I'm kind of bummed about that because when they went to that, when they started doing that, which was, I believe, two years ago, um, I kind of fell short ordering one and I forgot and I never got, I never got one custom made. And then years went on and I've been competing and not shooting my trad bows so much. And I just kind of let the idea go by the wayside. And then I know, I believe the month is September uh, when they're making them. And it is now October 3rd. And I was like, Oh, I really still want to get one. And I, uh, I never put in a call to have one made and yeah, now, uh, I'm behind again, but that's okay. I like this one. I have, I am, I'm constantly looking for used ones. Um, they're not real hard to come by, but they're not easy to find either. Shoot a couple from back here. And I keep getting bounce outs. That's a bent arrow. And I wonder if that tip is kind of flat. We got one more. All right. Here I obviously have a tree stand shot. I'm not sure if my mic even works from here. I'm pretty far away at the moment, but we'll see. I'll film it anyway. And if the mic doesn't work, then that's okay. I will just edit it later. But tree stand shot. Camera's down by the target. I don't know. It's like 25 or 6 yards out there. A little low. Here's that bent arrow. Let's see if it goes down. Hey. <laughs> Here is that first one is low. These two are good shots. I'll shoot this one up close because it's kind of a small target, but let's shoot it. Ha! 
<laughs> rejected again. That means this one's going to get rejected too. It was a good shot though. Hey, it's stuck. Looks like a good hard shot. Good lung shot. My reject. far little target arrow flew nice it's a bit low And that went a bit high. I'm gonna shoot this target over here on the right. I like the aluminum. People ask me why I choose the aluminum over carbon um, with my traditional archery stuff. Um, I don't always choose it. Um, I just like the fact that I can get so many different spines and pretty much find the exact spine I need for any bow the range of aluminum is massive if you've ever looked at an aluminum archery chart from easton uh, you will see that they have so many and you know with their natural weight you can pretty much get a good hunting arrow you won't have to weight it up in any other way it's got a beautiful weight to it not like a wood arrow where you'll find some pretty dense woods <clears throat> but Aluminum arrows have a really nice weight, um, a little bit of point weight, and then it's, it's good to go. So the tunability of the aluminum arrow is what I really, really like. There we go. Little tiny little elk over there. Get him again. <laughs> rejected it was a good shot I promise <laughs> let's shoot that one again over there on, on the left it's a badger no it's a wolf it's really just a dark blob of a target All right. I have taken my bow on rifle elk hunts, believe it or not. You just never know. You go on a rifle elk hunt and they get close enough. You can shoot them, but it's always better with the rifle. You get it done quicker, but. Maybe after that shot, I should take a rifle. <laughs> that completely missed. Now in my defense, it's a really tiny little elk. Probably wouldn't even be as big as a dog. <laughs> there we go. Now if you're noticing I'm camping the bow, I do cant pretty much all of my wood bows. It's a matter of how much, I suppose.
No, I hit my shirt. Actually, it was still a good, decent shot. Not a great shot. But... Alright, I don't have much more time. I gotta get home here a little bit. I'll shoot a couple more and then head home. Obviously a tree stand shot. This tree stand's been here for a very long time. Um, the only thing we replaced on it is the railing to meet code out here at the Fort Collins Archery Association. Um, I know you can't see them, but I think one is 35 and the other's at least 45. I'm not even going to attempt at it, but I'll shoot at that 35 yarder. I think it is. I don't know. I guess need to know. I just, I'm going to hold point on. And point on is a tick high. That's good. So I can aim a bit low, make up the difference. I'm going to hit my shirt. You know, it's long sleeve weather. And I like these kind of shirts, of course. I like wearing long sleeves. But they're a little bag. This one's a little baggy, so it gets caught. Got another tree stand shot, obviously. You know, long bows, like these here, <clears throat> anything over 60 inches, when you get into the 64, 66, 68, 70, and you start shooting from a tree stand, things get difficult. I've heard that from many people, um, and I've experienced it myself. You just have to kind of know how to navigate around whatever it is you're shooting your your terrain your area your tree cutting branches or however but it's totally possible um absolutely possible to take a long bow into a tree stand yes it's a little more cumbersome but it works absolutely fine wolf let me see if i can hang over this i don't think i can i'll probably get some string contact yeah i don't really care for that i'll just step back oh it was a good shot and it got rejected 
Man, I just keep getting rejected. I need some pointier points. We'll have to call Rocky Mountain Specialty Gear and get some pointy points. See my view this evening. I have a little pond here and I have quite a few bullfrogs and it's kind of nice to see And if you have interest in chunky bows, website. Um, their website is montanabows.blogspot.com. And that will take you to their website. It's just an informational page. They have some photos of stuff they've done once in a while. They'll update it and because you'll otherwise see that they have um, stock bows and they don't really update that very often. So you'll see a pile of them are just sold. There's a lot of pictures on there, but they're they're sold. There's some, I guess, that aren't, but um, not many. Most of them from what I've seen are sold. Um, but you can see what they offer, which bows they offer, and you can order direct. This is a 33 yard shot. They only know that because I shoot from this spot quite often. And it's point on for most of my bows. As I head back to the truck, some final thoughts. Um, great bow, sweet shooter, super D, Tolki bows. Um, this particular bow, like I said, short range bow. Most traditional archery stuff is short range gear. 20 yards and in. I've, I have very few bows that I would start reaching out. Um, into the 25 and 30 mark. Uh, maybe at elk with some of my heavier stuff, I'd have no problem. I just know they're fast, flat, heavy hitters, 50 pound bows, things of that nature. I'll bring one out here sooner than later and uh, mess around. Um, but check them out, Tolki Bows, Super D. Hope everyone's well. Make it look good. <laughs>